I, I would like to thank Simona for the invitation to be here and say that I also think this is a very important book. So I'm, I'm very pleased to be able to participate in this conversation. With the important concept of banal deception, Simona Natale makes the convincing argument that deception is not simply a byproduct of computational media, but constitutive of the development of artificial intelligence. Analyzing the historical trajectory of AI from Turing's imitation game to the present, Natale shows that the field of AI constantly interacted with the field of human computer interfaces. AI, like HCI, needed to model the user in order to create an efficient human computer interface, which sets up the dynamics for a feedback loop to emerge between the model's assumptions and a user's responses. As a result, the banal deception of such devices as a voice assistant conditions a user's responses by exploiting stereotypical assumptions about female versus male speakers, for example, various accents, British versus American, et cetera, as Natalie shows in a critical analysis of this form of AI. In addition, software developers employ various strategies to convince users that a bot, for example, actually has a more sophisticated capabilities than it actually possesses. Arguing that banal deception quote, is not forcefully malicious, as it always contributes some form of value to the user, unquote. Natali also notes that it is not thereby, quote, devoid of problems and risks, unquote. One crucial challenge, Natali writes, has to do with the fact that banal deception already bears within it the germs of straight out deception. It is in this context that he mentions deep fakes, and argues that, quote, the development of communicative AI based on banal deception will spark unprecedented changes in our relationships with machines and more broadly in our social lives. Thinking about his strategy here, we may note that his argument does not depend on malicious deception. Rather, he makes the subtler point that even if no straight out deception is involved, Banal deception nevertheless have important consequences for our view of ourselves in relation to other humans, as well as our relation with machines. With this important opening that Matale's work provides, I would like to think further about the significance of deep fakes. Deep fakes are often generated using generative antagonistic networks composed of a generator and a discriminator. Working with a database of images, voice samples, and other digital data, the generator creates an approximation of the subject, which the discriminator then compares with the original, creating a digital scoreboard indicating where the fake falls short. Using these data, the generator then creates another version of the surrogate. The cycle repeats hundreds or thousands of times, each time drawing closer to the original and finally becoming nearly undetectable as a fake. As many critics have pointed out, deep fakes can be used for malicious purposes. For example, as propaganda supporting a political position that the original would never condone. Nevertheless, even if no malicious uses are in evidence, deep fakes nevertheless will have a very significant implication for our view of ourselves, much as Natali argues is the case for banal deception. Building on this insight, I suggest that we can conceptualize the deceptive practices of AI as a spectrum. For this argument, we will assume that the issue is not malicious deception, but rather the subtler territory marked by the influences that the software will have on us, our views of ourselves and our relations to other humans. At the mild or cool end of the spectrum is banal deception. At the intense or hot end are deep fakes, which I will call by analogy with banal deception, erratic deception. 
As Natali writes, banal deceptions are often accompanied by a dual consciousness in which users are very well aware that they're talking with a machine rather than a person, but they nevertheless revert to such customary interpersonal relations as wishing Siri good night. Deep fakes, by contrast, can easily be mistaken for a real person and invite correspondingly intense personal interactions. One of their effects, I argue, is to subvert the human aura. By analogy with Walter Benjamin's famous essay about the aura of the artwork in the age of technological reproducibility, I define the human aura as the belief that each human person is unique and uniquely valuable. When a surrogate is created that very closely resembles an individual, but nevertheless is capable of being reproduced in mass, the effect is to subvert the human aura. A related effect is to initiate a crisis of representation across a variety of media, which have as one of their primary purposes, the depiction of a human aura. For example, in literature, techniques such as stream of conscious narration assume that the nature of a literary character can be conveyed through certain representative expressions, linguistic tics, idiosyncrasies of gesture and behavior, and so forth. When the human aura is drawn into question by deep fakes, all of these techniques will be challenged to the, response, to the possibility that these identifying semiotic marks are no longer sufficient to distinguish between an original and a fake. The implications of erratic deception are, in my view, even more momentous than for banal deception. Natali's important work in alerting us to the significance of banal deception opens a line of inquiry that is likely to expand exponentially in the future. It should therefore rightly be considered the forerunner of an entirely new field investigating deceptive practices in AI. Thank you.